Hey, what's up YouTube? This is EV Variety and today I have got an interesting video. So I did a video a while back on uh, my webcomic Demonico whenever um, whenever I decided it was time to reveal it and um, kind of show it to you. I was hesitant to link the channel with the comic because um, I, I like to just keep it separate and um, I think it I think it um, I think it did well on its own. I wanted to see, really, I wanted to see how it would do starting out with nothing to support it. Just starting from the ground up, beginning a comic, a brand new, you know, Instagram account, a brand new Twitter account. Everything was brand new. Um, and it's done really well. Um, I'm well over 100 followers at this point. The comic is well over 1,200 views at this point, which is pretty good. Um, considering again, I started from nothing so and and keep in mind that I don't have like a huge budget or anything It's just me just you know every now and then spending $15 on the Instagram advertisement and uh, That kind of thing so you may be wondering what the heck is this? Well, this is symbiotic. This is a book project. I'm working on now. It's not a comic like Demonico is uh, but I am using the same art style obviously uh, it, it's my style. This is what I do um, thick outline with thinner lines for the details and uh, and kind of the what, what I've really done differently with this is there's a lot more bright colors compared to Demonico whereas Demonico is very much uh, I guess more more grim in tone I guess you could say um, because of the main character being Simon the pessimist uh, this features a lot of optimistic characters and it's very much upbeat um, and so to give you the premise of this, uh, it's set in somewhat of a future setting like 20 years from now, um, a little bit over 20 years from now, um, and and symbiotic name comes from the fact that they have a genetic uh, gift known as a symbol. I may change that to a symbio uh, because symbol seems a little bit generic. I may change that to symbio, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, um, and that makes them symbiotics. Now, of course, they have to, uh, know, knowing, you know, trying to be realistic with the world, the government knows this, the state is what it's called, it's referenced in uh, all, of the, all of the chapters. Um, state knows this and has like a regulation type of thing um, so that people, you know, have to go through an apprenticeship before they can get a license to, you know, run around and beat up bad guys and save people, right? Um, so, basically, uh, if you're going to draw any similarities to this, you know, with Demonico, I said the biggest similarity was uh, Teen Titans in the feel of it. Um, I can't quite think of one source of media that Demonico is very heavily compared to, it could be, unless I just haven't watched it. Um, the setting is much more unique, I would say, in Demonico than this. If you're going to compare this to anything, it's probably going to be My Hero Academia. Um, but instead of them going to like a school for it, they're just directly being apprenticed by, um, if that's a word, <laughs> apprenticed by uh, people that they really look up to. People that are already well known in the world as, you know, the best of the best. Um, and so that's what drives all of these characters to go to a scouting program, uh, which is essentially... Uh, I guess keeping up with the trends of times <laughs> a battle royale, right? Um, even though battle royale is starting to become less of a of a big thing now because it's it's kind of fading away a little bit Even though there is no there's not really a big fad that's taking over the gaming industry. It's still battle royale is like a lot of game types, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I digress um, the main thing is That you got all these characters kind of pit up against each other and they have to fight uh, and whoever wins has a much higher chance of becoming apprentices of three mentors. Now, I'll get to those characters in a minute. Um, but yeah, right now, still everything is very much uh, in progress of being made. Uh, I have um, written, actually, the as of this time, I have written the entire uh, series, the rough draft at least, uh, all the way up to the last book. Uh, so I have... Uh, done a, a lot of work on this, and uh, I think it—I think it's turned out pretty good. Of course, it's a rough draft, so any, can, anything could change. Demonico went through several changes, uh, and even the remaster of season one. Um, 
f since it was released originally. So there's, you know, there's, there's, there's quite a lot of room for change still. Um, but I wanted to showcase in this video the characters, uh, since I've given you kind of the premise, what it is, uh, and, and what to compare it to. Now I'm going to show you why those comparisons will not work. So, <laughs> so let's start with um, the what you would call the main protagonist. Uh, let's start with Gren. Now Gren, oh boy, Gren. Gren uh, is is very much the kind of soft boy type of uh, stereotype, I guess you could say. If you're if you're going to compare it to like a, a character trope or stereotype, he's very much the soft boy. He's he's super super optimistic and kind-hearted like he, he just he he doesn't want to make any enemies at this tournament but he really really wants to win because he looks up to his 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 idol uh, uh, Percy which I'll get to later and um, his weapon obviously is uh, a shuriken that can draw in water and you can see by the effects I put on it that it's sort of pulling it in uh, through the central hole kind of like a little a little current in the water and um, that is his ability. He can, he can, with his symbol, his genetic power, he can take that weapon and uh, and draw in water from the air, from ponds, from fountains, anything. He can draw in water from anywhere, um, and 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 use it to coat his weapon. Um, now that power is useful in specific situations, uh, like putting out fires and stuff like that. Um, of course, he can always kind of do his signature move, which is Shuriken Wave, uh, which allows him to toss it and and uh, sort of like a rushing wave of, of water, essentially. Um, so that is what Gren can do, uh, and that is basically his character. Um, and this design, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, but a lot of these designs, not all of them, but a lot of them are are based on some Jajinkas I drew back in the day. Now, if you don't know what a Jajinka is, it is a, it is a um, well, primarily, I, I guess it doesn't have to be Pokemon, but a, a lot of times it's, it's characters, like anime characters, that type of thing, drawn in the style of clothing and armor of Pokemon. So, for instance, the first one I drew was, of course, Sceptile, and it was, it was, admittedly, uh, let's get the cringe out of the way. Admittedly, it was me, um, wearing subtile themed armor. And I also drew my brother, who liked Blaze again. I drew, uh, my best friend Chris, who, who liked Swampert. Um, and, and a lot of, and a lot of other characters. Like, I, I did this for so many, uh, Pokemon. And, and what I would do in my spare time, uh, as a kid, uh, in, in, well, not a kid, but I guess a teenager, in high school is I would draw these characters and I would think of like what their backstory could be like like you know what what, what could this be because I've always been pretty imaginative um, which probably explains why my grades weren't weren't the greatest but <laughs> I graduated here I am I have a degree so and a certificate so whatever um, so with this with with, it, with this in mind I'm not gonna say what Pokemon that these characters were originally based off of and then tweaked some more to, to look different. I'm not gonna say, but some of these should be fairly obvious if you know Pokemon. Such as this character's name is even Gren. <laughs> if you don't get this one and you know Pokemon, you're kind of you're you're kinda of, there's kinda of no hope for you, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Yeah, some of them are fairly obvious, um, but not all of them are, are, are super obvious, and, and it'll be a fun little guessing game. So that's Gren. Uh, he, he's somewhat the protagonist, but, but there's, there's really four main protagonists in this, in this book series. Uh, but if you think of it like this, like, um, like Teen Titans, right? The protagonist of the show is all five of them, but the one who gets the most, I guess, screen time and focus would be Robin. So, Gren is essentially the Robin of, of Symbiotic. So, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next character. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to go by appearance, like, when they appear in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, the chapters. So, Granite. Uh, this guy is a guardian. He is basically 
he shows up anywhere and anywhere uh, that an important event is go- event is going on, and uh, he acts as the security chief. Um, he is seven foot four in his armor, <laughs> and he is gigantic. Also, I will show like a height comparison at the end of this video, um, and and I think <laughs> I think you'll get an idea for just how big some of these characters are. Um, but yeah, there, there's there's quite a bit <laughs> there's quite a bit of a of um of I guess diversity in the height department. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's 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 this guy is huge. But I'll get back to showing you the uh, heights later on. I'll say that I'll say that for the end once I get done with all the characters. Anyway, so Granite, uh, very big dude, uh, mainly. I'm not going to tell you what he's inspired by, uh, again, from Pokemon, but there's another character he's inspired by. Dang it, and I just noticed there's an error. There's, there's, he, he's not colored in there. You might not be able to see that. Look, I missed it. How did I miss that? I've, I made this art, like, almost a month ago at this point. All right, well, that's kind of disappointing. Anyway, <laughs> I'll fix that later. Of course, I notice it now whenever I'm doing a video on it, right? After I've already put out all the all the posts on it and everything, of course. Anyway, <laughs> that's that's typical. That's typical Ethan. Typical Ethan moment. Anyway, so this guy um, uh, is just a super heroic type of stoic kind of guy. He's just he's obnoxiously heroic, if I if I want to say that. Um, uh, he speaks kind of nobly and everything like that, and uh, he serves as an obstacle for Gren once he arrives at the Symbolic Scouting Program uh, a little bit late. So he, he, he he's guarding the gate, and he says, Nope, the tournament, you know, entry time has closed. You cannot go in. And Gren says, Fight me. And Gren is five foot six, and this dude's seven foot four. <laughs> so you got a little bit of a David versus Goliath going on. And of course, I won't tell you who wins. You'll have to read that for yourself. But this guy has a shield and a hammer, uh, and he is massive. But besides that, that's, pretty, that's basically it for his character. Uh, now, for next in appearance, we've got Percy. Now, Percy is the idol of Gren. Gren idolizes this guy ever He's done it ever since he was, like, a baby. Um, so, he uses a short katana uh, as his weapon and his symbol is uh basically i don't know yet <laughs> if we're gonna be honest with you i haven't gotten to that point where where i've decided what his symbol does um exactly uh so i'm not gonna say anything in this video um i've got a couple ideas running around um but he is he is um very quick very quick and is regarded as the best symbiotic in the state um and so this guy is you know Pretty much a legend in the area. Um, and of course, like I said, Gren idolizes him and wants to be his apprentice so badly, so badly, uh, that he's willing to fight Granite just to get inside the tournament. Um, and so this dude, this dude, um, as far as personality goes, he's kind of like, he's kind of like everyone's, everyone's dad, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Um, and, uh, and that's really all I got to say about this without spoiling anything. Um, he's just one of the mentors, one of the three mentors that is looking for an apprentice. And um, he will find that apprentice in the tournament. Um, so, besides that, that's really all I got to say. Actually, there's one more thing. His uh, appearance is based on a, or at least his face appearance. Um, actually, his whole body and everything, too. Because he's based off of a, a pastor at my church. Uh, and <laughs> the hair and everything, like, he, he's tall, he's, he's, he's got, like, uh, the curly hair thing, like I said, uh, and, and I realized, I was trying to figure out how I wanted his face to look, and I realized it once I, I went to church one night, and this guy was, and, and, and the, and the preacher was wearing, uh, a long green button-up shirt, and I was like, that's it, that's, that's Percy right there, um, so yeah. That's basically all I gotta say about him. Moving on, next one in appearance would be Dell. If you want to open up, oh, I pressed the wrong one. Excuse me. There we go. Dell. Uh, she is Gren's childhood friend. 
uh, and and uh, their their plan is to team up in the tournament and basically win it together and then once they get to the finals they both survive from it uh well i say, I say survive survive is too much of a of a <laughs> of a harsh thing uh dell is basically saying like okay we get to the end then me and you duke it out whoever wins wins um and she is very optimistic uh if i had to make a direct comparison like she is very much like I guess Starfire would, from Teen Titans would be a good comparison. Not not Titans, the the stupid live action show. Uh, we're talking about the Starfire from Teen Titans, the cartoon. Very optimistic, um, and uh, and she uses some magic. She's she's kind of you can see the design is very much witch like, uh, except I did something different with with her robe and hat design to make her like super pastel and bright. Um, and and I think I think that that works because a lot of witches just had the black or, or like dark blue robe. Uh, look at uh, was it Little Witch Academia? I think it's the anime. Uh, all of them kind of have similar robes. Uh, all of them basically dark. Uh, Harry Potter, all of them are dark. So this is a bit of a subversion from that. And uh, yeah, what else can I say? She's just she's just super positive and, and happy. She uses pink fire which is also different than the typical red or orange fire so I try to make her a little bit different than other characters in her I guess archetype um, so yeah that's basically all, all I gotta say about her uh, we shall move on next in appearance would be Elia Elia now I had some debate about this character and I and I had it open in my uh, in my discord server which you should join uh, which is the same one for Demonico. It, this, this symbiotic has a separate, um, a separate uh, couple of channels. Uh, but I, I show I show this artwork uh, to several several people um, in the in the uh, in, in, in di several discords, and I was debating on whether or not she should be green or she should be purple. And I did green, I really do like green, but the problem is I thought she looked too much like Tinkerbell, right? Just a bit too much like Tinkerbell. So I decided in the end to go with purple uh, because, well, not only me deciding it, but also because I showed it to a bunch of people when they said purple. Uh, majority won on that, so I was like, okay, purple, purple makes sense. I like it. I will keep the green eyes, though, as a reference to it, uh, just so that, you know, we have both colors included um, in some way. And, uh, yeah, so she is uh, basically a pixie. Flies around, shoots some magic arrows, and that's, that's basically uh, what, what her character does. Uh, now her her pixie dust crap, whatever it is she drops whenever she's flying around from her wings, uh, that has small healing abilities, um, so she can operate as a support uh, for a team. Uh, but she is very much a hot shot. She is uh, kind of arrogant a little bit, and wants to be, I guess, the center of attention would be the best way to say it. She wants to be, uh, you know, all of that, essentially. She doesn't want to be the support, she wants to be the focus. And that's just not what she does. So her character development is going to reflect a bit of that struggle uh, once we get further along the uh, further along the uh, I guess the story, the book. So because right now only six chapters are available because it's a pilot episode. If you want to call it an episode, even though it's a book, um, it is like I said, six chapters, and it encompasses an entire story within the story. Uh, and then after that, the real, the real series is going to kick off afterwards. Um, when that will happen, can't give you a date right now. But it will happen. <laughs> so let's close out of this. Moving on to Victor. Now Victor is basically how I said Elia was a bit arrogant. Victor is double the arrogance. He is, he thinks he's better than everyone else. Uh... He's the best. No one else can beat him. 
I mean, look at this drip. Golden shoes. You, you can't. You can't beat this guy. He's got the drip, right? He's got it. No. No one can stand up to this man. Uh, he's got an electric gauntlet. Obviously, that shoots electric electricity, uh, and also it can absorb light and shoot it back out uh, from the surrounding area uh, in kind of a, a spectrum type of uh, way. It's got all the colors, and you know, it's a rainbow life essentially. Um, and and yeah, he's he is very much. I am going to win this tournament because I am better than everyone else here. Uh, type of mentality, uh, and, it, and it's not like the healthy mentality where you have confidence in yourself. It's the I am superior to everyone here <laughs> type of mentality uh, and he obviously has a lot of rivalries with Gren which is just really obnoxiously nice uh, and, and, and wants to make everyone uh, you know feel good even apologizes whenever he beats people uh, that's that's the type of character that Gren is Victor is like ha loser <laughs> in fact his favorite phrase is to call people losers so uh, he is he is very much the bully character. If you want to give him an archetype, um, so yeah, that is Victor. Uh, again, guess for all of these, guess the Pokemon they're inspired by, uh, and and leave a comment below. Leave leave a comment on the ones you're you're really sure about. Um, if you want, you can have all the characters <laughs> and, and and list their. Uh, list what Pokemon you think they're inspired by. Some of them are multiple, I'll give you that. Some of them are multiple, so uh, not just one Pokemon a lot of times for, 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 for these designs, there are multiple uh, in consideration. Um, so yeah, I accidentally went out of order uh, because you actually get to see Como just before you see Victor. Uh, now Como uh, is very much the opposite of a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, girl characters, specifically in anime. Um, where all of them are, like, you know, the, all of them are basically Del, right? A lot, a lot of anime girls, which no, this isn't anime, I wouldn't call this anime, this is just me doing art. Uh, I think my style is different enough from anime that you could tell a difference. Um, it's more inspired actually by Teen Titans and, oddly enough, Danny Phantom, because of the la the, the loud, why did I say loud? Thick outline around the characters. But a lot of anime characters <laughs> are like Del, right? A lot of cartoon characters are like Del. Como is very much different. Um, she is she is big, she is very strong, and she has a big shield uh, that can reflect things. It can uh, summon a dragon uh, with wings that shield uh, her and anyone around her in like a dome shape. Uh, and she is very few of words. She doesn't have too much to say. Uh, and just it's just there to get get the win. Just there to get the job done, and uh, move on. Uh, so, not very friendly. She's very much, I guess you could say, the opposite of Gren, even more so than Victor, because she's she's just kind of she doesn't really care about anyone else. She just wants to win it. Um, and obviously this. Kind of contract, kind of uh, con contrast. Is that the right word? Contradicts. Anyway, she stands against Gren and everyone else in the tournament, so they got to bring her down. But she is hard to bring down, as you will find out when you read. Anyway, um, besides this, I think that's pretty much all I got to say about Como. Um, yeah, that's it. Moving on, next in appearance, we get to see the other mentors. We get to see Kurt. Kurt is uh, very much the grouch of the group. Uh, he obviously has seen some some battles with his um, false leg there, his prosthetic leg. Now this is in a futuristic setting, so things are a little more uh, enhanced such as the ability to fully bend his knee and fully move around his foot, uh, which is something we're not quite to the point for prosthetic legs, at least in the affordable world, right? In, 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 the, in, the, in the range of affordability, uh, not many people can get the best prosthetics uh, that they need, uh, which is unfortunate, but it just is how it is. So, this guy has seen some stuff, he's lost a leg, 
Uh, he's got a big mace that, similar to Gren, he has some water uh, element abilities where he can draw in water, have it follow the mace wherever he swings it, and he can swing it up high, make a huge wall like a wave, uh, and use that to protect uh, him and anyone else behind him. So that is his that is his major ability uh, is is that right there. And I, and I think I talked about the others uh, as well. I don't think I've missed out any as far as talking about their abilities so far, except for Percy. But we'll get to that when I get to it. <laughs> um. So yeah, Kurt again very much the grouchy character, the somewhat reluctant character. Likes booze a little too much. You know, he's very stereotypical, right? Like, <laughs> there's not too much creative about this character, if I'm being really honest. Um, except the design. I think the design is, is, is pretty unique. Um, also, yes, his right leg is totally armored up because of what happened to his left leg. That is the type of character he is. He's like, well, I've lost one. I'm definitely not losing the other. Let me put all of my armor budget into my right leg. Uh, and, and that's the kind of... And this is armor too. A lot. Of, uh, some people, when I showed this design, they thought it was a prosthetic arm, but but no, it's 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 armored. Uh, he has both arms. Uh, it's just armored. Uh, that's why I made the prosthetic leg specifically look different than anything else on him. Uh, so yeah, that's basically all I got to say about Kurt. He's just kind of the grouch of the group. But then we got the youngest mentor. Also, Kurt is the oldest. Percy is the middle, uh, and Bron is the youngest. Uh, now they're called. These three are called the Symbiotic Brothers. They're not actually brothers, um, but they are, they're, they're so close friends that they all consider each other brothers. Um, uh, fun fact, Braun is physically, uh, as, as well as like the facial appearance, based on my little brother. <laughs> and I just started talking about brothers, about the characters not actually being real brothers, but then again, this <laughs> this character is based on my little brother, um, so he is uh, also the Pokemon he's based on is his favorite Pokemon, which I might have already said, which kind of gives it away. But I, I made some it's Blaziken, okay? <laughs> I'll go ahead and say it's Blaziken. Uh, but I have made some differences, such as uh, the fire being blue, uh, his eyes glowing blue as well. Um, I just wanted to stay away from the typical red and orange fire and, and, and make some things different, such as Stell having pink and him having blue. Um, and I just I just wanted to make things a little bit different. Uh, now this guy is very much energetic. Compared to Kurt, he is almost the opposite. Uh, whereas Kurt's kind of, uh, kind of grouchy, he's very optimistic and, uh, and just here to have a good time. Percy's more kind of gonna you know, go by the rules type of thing. Bronze is like, eh, whatever, and he and he does he does what he wants. Uh, but yeah, he is he is a uh, very strong, very fast, and uh, that's uh, basically his character. It's just he's he's the optimistic young one of the of the mentors, and he is also looking for an apprentice. So those are the three mentors, uh, and I showed you all of the um, all the contenders in the tournament. So, of the uh, symbolic scouting program. So that is all the characters that will appear in the pilot six episodes, six chapters. I mean. Uh, so, with that being said, I do have some more characters that I want to show uh, that I have already posted on on Instagram uh, that I will show. So, first of all, next in order of appearance is Dove and Little P. Now, these two characters, obviously the mother and the daughter uh, these two characters are uh, the family of Percy uh, once again this guy is the is the best symbiotic in the state regarded as a hero to everyone he's basically a living legend and this is his family uh, and you get to meet his family whenever he brings his apprentice uh, home to the to his home and he's gonna train them, you know, teach them everything he knows, and and uh, this is the family that they they also have to live with while they're doing their training. So, Dove is, and I'll go back to this art. Dove is a therapist, and that is how she and Percy met. This through some therapy, and therapy led to 
something else and boom there's a baby so <laughs> it's it sounds kind of, it sounds kind of it, it, it's it's not okay okay i'm just gonna leave it there <laughs> so yeah so she is um she is with her job she's able to stay home while also work so you don't really see her out of the the house and the story uh because she can do web meetings and all that kind of stuff uh logistically i've thought about these characters occupations and what they would do on a daily basis i have thought about all of this and i've written it down in a document so i could keep track of everything uh i this is like a lot of I've, i put a lot of world building into this um really trying to focus on the world and the characters in the world even more so than demonico did because demonico set up the idea that you know the world is flooded but it didn't really go much into detail why uh and i did that kind of on purpose because it wasn't really important to the plot but it's uh it, it's it, you know it, it's it, i could have gone more in in detail with it um than i did uh but again not the focus of the plot the world in in symbiotic is definitely the focus of the plot because you know these characters have superpowers because of of the world because of how the system works so i'm trying to explain where they live a bit more and what what they do so she's a therapist uh penelope little p is her nickname she's just adorable that's really all i had to say about her <laughs> also drawing kids is hard and you you think that i would get this um you think i would get this after drawing timmy which is another kid character in demonico so much but timmy what, what's difficult is the proportions because this is a tiny person right this is a tiny person and yes her head is huge like it's 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 bigger than doves <laughs> but part of that is because i want to make her have a big head because you know chibi characters are kind of cute right uh and then you've got you know you gotta draw the rest of her you gotta draw the rest of her so she's gotta have small arms small legs small body but it's like it's hard to do that because timmy the other kid character i've drawn wears this big like heavy coat like, he wears this really thick coat and 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 the and, uh, and shorts so it kind of it kind of hides his 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 anatomy essentially is is, is where i'm getting to um <laughs> so it, it it made it more difficult i had a hard time drawing penelope i had a hard time drawing her but uh, I, I think i got the design pretty pretty well i think uh, she turned out adorable um and yeah that's pretty much it also the hair on dove i put a lot more detail in i, I put a lot more detail in the clothing in these characters because unlike demonico i'm not drawing every single chapter uh or episode i am this is a book so i am drawing the character illustrations so you can see how they look i can focus more on the clothing detail uh again look at gren gren has so much more clothing detail in his design um and it's supposed to reflect the idea that it's loose on him that he's small uh it, it's it's in his hair like his hair is messy uh because he's just kind of he, he's 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 a teenage boy you know <laughs> it is what it is his scarf is fl is flipping out like this um and and yeah i think that re represents his his design very well whereas if you look at como como um you know her her, her shirt is kind of torn uh, her hair is messy. It just shows that, like, you know, it shows character in the character before I even, before you even get to read uh, about how they are. Um, so yeah, so that's that with Dove and Lil P. Uh, and I talked a little bit more about the philosophy of how I draw these characters. So uh, next is in order of appearance is Crow. Now Crow, I won't go too much into detail because I want to keep uh, his. Like who he is in the story, um, a bit secret, but I will say that he is an antagonist, uh, and you can find out more precise details about them, like their height um, and, and, and stuff like that, statistic type of things. You can find that in the Discord under symbiotic characters, uh, and it goes into every character I'm showing in this. Um, so yeah, this guy is is essentially a villain and and he has a cane sword he's got wings obviously if you couldn't tell that uh he's very much kind of based off of the sort of mafia type of look uh but at the same time uh 
a bit different because, well, he has wings. Uh, he's basically a crime lord, and I'm not going to go into anything about, like, more about who he is, just about what he is, and that's it from there. Uh, again, his design, his clothing, like, he's more neat. Uh, his, it's not as wrinkly as Gren's because he's more neat. He takes a bit more pride in his appearance. Uh, and yeah, that's basically that's basically uh, basically it for him. I don't want to go into spoilers, so you're gonna have to find out and read when I put more chapters up, right? So then after that, we get uh, a glimpse at Pamda. Now Pamda is very uh, acrobatic. She uses a bamboo stick, whacks people with it. That is her main thing. Is that she loves pandas? She wears a panda mask. Uh, and and panda themed attire with uh, black and white, obviously. Uh, she does not have a symbol. She does not have any kind of superpower at all. Um, and I forgot to mention this. Neither do Dove and Penelope, um, or at least Penelope. It's unknown because she hasn't shown anything yet. Um, but essentially, not every character in this is a superhero. Some of them just don't have powers. Um, but in, in this case, with Panda, she is. An antagonist but she doesn't have any powers so she's going up against all these superheroes with just her physical skill and a stick of bamboo <laughs> uh, which it's just a funny way to set up a fight because you think about all these fantastical things that the, that that you know these characters are doing and then you just got her stick <laughs> But yeah, uh, and that's about it uh, with her, really. She's just she's a really fun character to write because she's a bit crazy. Um, if you couldn't tell already, just by looking at her. <laughs> she's just a bit crazy. So she's very fun to write because she just... She, she, she doesn't care. Like, there's no sort of boundaries for her character. She can do and say whatever she wants. <laughs> and it's in character for her, which makes her really fun. So... And then lastly, I'm going to show you Dusty. Now, Dusty is very much a cowboy. And I'm going to tweak this design a bit more. Um, the boots, I'm going to do a bit more detail with the boots because they don't exactly look like cowboy boots. Um, needs to be a bit more curvature up here and, and maybe a spur uh, on here and on the backside of this boot. Um, and uh, But yeah, he's, he's very much a cowboy character. Uh, kind of inspired, I would say... Uh, by McCree, but then again, McCree is inspired by every cowboy ever, so I <laughs> I can't really say there's one character he's inspired by because it's multiple, right? It, it's he's he is the Western cowboy shoot 'em up type of character. Uh, except unlike a lot of the Western characters, he's not a good guy. He's a bad guy. Um, and what's interesting about him is that instead of like a rifle or a revolver or something like that, he's using uh, sawed-off double-barrel shotguns. Uh, and they fire sand, <laughs> red hot sand. Uh, and part of this, and I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but uh, part of this is because I'm attempting to write the story in a way that it could be made kid friendly. Uh, it's not necessarily kid friendly now, like it's not made for kids. There are some things like the violence obviously in it. Um, there's, there's, um, a bit of plots that are a bit dark for I would say a child uh, but it's it's um it's not like a main it's not like really it's not like Demonico right Demonico deals with with a lot of demon characters and stuff like that like that's that's on a different level of dark uh, but there are just some things in this that that uh, I wouldn't say are necessarily uh, kid friendly um, so to speak but I'm writing the plot and the characters in a way that I could make it kid-friendly if I wanted to. And the reason for that, I'll, I'll go ahead and go into it now, is primarily because I'm writing this as a book with the character arts and all that. Um, writing it with the intention of maybe getting a webtoon artist uh, or just another comic webcomic artist. Um, trying to get their attention. Maybe I can, you know, maybe I could... Uh, uh, present this or something and someone sees it and says oh, that looks interesting let me pick this up uh, and say hey you've written the story I'm going to come in and do the art 
and we're both gonna, you know, we're both gonna have credit for this and, and, and both make something interesting. The Fever Dream, the absolute will not happen, but has a 0.001% chance of actually happening, is that this could become a cartoon. Uh, with all the, you know, bright characters and everything, the the cool powers and everything, I could definitely see it, in my mind, I could see it being a fun Saturday morning cartoon. Um, and, and I think, I think, uh, that dream is really far, far out, far reaching. Uh, but I think it'd be really cool because I simply don't have the time to learn animation, nor do I have uh, the <laughs> the budget to make a full animation. Uh, I think, for instance, a good inspiration would be Has Been Hotel um, and Hell of a Boss from uh, on YouTube. And that's just animators passionate working together to make a, a really good, really good cartoon. And I think... You know, I think if, if if I really wanted to focus only on that, maybe I could do it. Maybe I could bring a group of people together to make a cartoon like that. But I simply don't have the time, nor do I feel like that's where I want to go with this. I feel like this is a pitch type of thing where I make a book, people uh, will hopefully read it and like it, and it gets enough attention to where people might want to invest art into it and make a comic or, again, Fever Dream cartoon. Um, so I'm writing this with the attempt of being, uh, with the possibility of being kid-friendly. So I have him shoot Red Hot Sand from his guns. <laughs> uh, now, the idea of having guns in a cartoon nowadays will probably just blacklist this character anyway. In which I might make these guns more bright, right? That's what Yu-Gi-Oh does. <laughs> it makes the guns like bright green and blue and that kind of thing and if I have to do that I'll do it but I won't like it <laughs> uh, so yeah lots of lots of uh, potential for me either making it as it is or making it uh, kid friendly but besides that Dusty you know he's an antagonist and, and Pamda the pr character I showed previously Pamda has a major crush on him but she's not subtle about it at all which leads to some funny dynamics I've talked with a couple of friends uh, about about this and about these two characters uh, and I'll call them I'll call them the Jesse and James <laughs> of, of, of symbiotic uh, very much so because of, of their dynamic um, except except they're obviously a bit more I guess romantic tension sort of thrown in there than Jesse and James even though I totally ship those characters as well anyway so let's go ahead and move on from this now i've showed you all the characters i want to show there is one more character but i can't show that one due to spoilers so you're just gonna have to wait i'm sorry let's go ahead and get started with the height comparison now this is a chart from largest to smallest left to right of the characters and obviously there's one uh you know kind of mysterious character there that i will not show um but it's also got the ages of all the characters, so let's start from the largest. <laughs> Granite is a massive dude. Uh, in his armor, of course, he's 7'4". Outside of it, he's more like, um, I think I wrote down 6'10", or something like that, which is still massive, right? That's still a very tall dude. Uh, that's a basketball player for sure, but but this guy is is bulky. He's, he's just, he is the unmovable wall that he is designed to be as a character. Um, and... Then moving on, he's also kind of older, 43. He's he's very much like the the old kind of heroic type of character. He would be a mentor to someone else if if uh, I wrote a character to be his apprentice, but he's not taking one. He's just he's just a guardian. Um, then Crow also tall, six foot four. Kurt six foot two. Um, both of them are in their 30s. Uh, then you've got Dusty, who's young blood, six foot one. Bron again, still kind of younger, 25, six foot. Uh, flat Como is also uh, six foot, which is tall for a for a uh, for a girl for sure. Um, it's not the average. I don't know what the average height is for women. I'm not I'm not actually quite sure. Um, but she is definitely above average, or at least the higher end of it. Um, and again, she's bulky, so she she's she's kind of a she's kind of an opposite of what a lot of uh, uh, of girl characters are in media. 
Um, and, and I want to say this too because there are a lot of 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 the strong independent women type of character, right? And some people, when I say that, when I say that a girl is strong, immediately their eyes roll. That's not how you're supposed to be about it. Like, just you're not supposed to like hear the hear that type of character and just sigh. It's not supposed to be that way. There are good ways to write strong women, but oftentimes what ends up happening is they take uh, uh, all the characteristics of a of a male character, including the look. Uh, and design and they just slap woman parts on it and say okay this is a female strong character now uh there are many definitions for strong I'm not trying to get f philosophical here but the, you know you don't have to be physically strong to be considered a strong woman um and and i know many many people not just women but many people who are strong but aren't physically strong mentally strong spiritually that kind of thing um and como obviously is strong physically um, but it's not to the point where she belittles other characters around her just to prop her up, right? The story isn't focusing entirely on her, it's focusing on four characters. She just happens to be the strong one of the group. Um, and, and is, um, is, like I said, she, she's just the strong bulky character. She's a strong female character, but not in the sense that they are that she is handled badly like a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh of strong female characters are unfortunately in, in in media um there are a ton of strong dude characters such as kurt and braun these two are definitely strong granite is the epitome of the strong beefy dude he is the the himbo <laughs> if you want to call him that if you want to label him uh he is the himbo the he-man i guess of the uh the cronk of symbiotic <laughs> So, so yeah, just, just that rant aside, uh, moving on, Percy, the lead mentor character, is actually shorter than, than uh, Como, 5'10". Uh, He's in his 30s, similar to uh, Kurt and uh, Crow. Victor, also 5'10". He's 15, one year older than Gren uh, and the others, and the other apprentices. So you've got Dell, five foot nine. She's a bit taller than the other two. Uh, she is three inches taller, actually, than Gren, who, bless his soul, he is five foot six. He's on the shorter scale for a dude, but he's 14. He's still growing, right? Who knows? He might get taller. It might be a Edward Elric type of thing. I'm not going to tell you if it is or not, but it might be. Uh, and then you get to Panda, who's just a little bit shorter, 18. Um, then... I already talked about Gren. Uh, Dove is the same height, five foot six, but she is actually two years older than Percy, her husband. Uh, and then you've got Elia, which is the the resident short girl of the of the series, five foot four. Um, and then of course, little P, Penelope, four years old, three foot four. She is tiny. She is baby. Um, and I think that makes her character that much more adorable. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Besides that, um, if if you want to get like a glimpse of how the series actually looks, uh, what you'll find is when you're reading, uh, when you're reading at the beginning of the chapter and at the end of the chapter, there is a banner, and this is going to be consistent throughout every chapter. Uh, there's going to be two banners, and for the most part, it's going to pertain to the characters that you're seeing on, uh, well, on screen, so to speak. Um, what you, who you're going to be reading about. Um, so if Gren is prevalent in the scene, Gren's going to show up uh, at the start of the chapter or at the bottom. Uh, Como, same thing. If she's relevant in this chapter, she's going to appear. Uh, and so on and so forth. And this not only gives a, a character, a, you know, a look at the character so you don't have to use your mind to imagine how they look so much, uh, it gives you a visual representation of how this character looks. Um, and even their personality just by looking at their facial expression, their outfit and all that. Like I said, Gren is very much the messy, kind of nervous boy, uh, soft boy, if you want to call him that. Uh, and it reflects in his appearance. Uh, you also get to see their, their signature move, um, that they will 
occasionally shout out. It's not the case like uh, Pokemon where you have to say the name of the move every single time you use it. It's just, you know, they do it once in a scene and that's basically it at max. Um, it's just, I think it adds a bit more flavor to it. It's it, um, a bit more pizzazz, if you want to call it that. Very typical in Shonen stuff. Um, especially stuff like My Hero Academia. Uh, United States of Smashu! I'm sorry, I just offended every uh, Japanese viewer. Uh, and yeah, so that's it. That's that's basically that. I'm going to show you all the banners real quick. For all the characters. Got sort of all three of the older characters here. And then the antagonist. So yeah, that's basically it. And, and the colors, um, admittedly, admittedly, um, they are loosely based on the Pokemon they're based off of, their type, uh, their types. And, uh, like for instance, uh, I'll go back to Brawn. Brawn is, well, it doesn't really show up too well here, but, but Brawn is, is based off of Blaziken. So, you've got kind of the more orange-red up here, uh, for fire, and then you've got the darker brown, uh, almost mahogany for fighting. Uh, and so on and so on, and that's gonna help you guess what they're based off of, right? Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 basically it. That's everything I've I've uh, I've I've made so far as far as the oh I can show you the cover. Um, cover I just updated this today. And uh, yeah, again you can read all six of the pilot chapters. Uh, they're all available for you to just binge read. Uh, all the banners are included in them as well for every character. So again, you can visually see how these characters look when you're reading about them. Uh, gain a grip on their personality just by how they look initially, and then, uh, and then just have an easier time imagining it as you're reading. It's just—it's basically just like a guide uh, for for you to see how these characters look. So. Yeah, that's basically all I got for this video. I hope you enjoy Symbiolic and give it a read. Um, it's on Tapas. The link, of course, is in the description, and I'm also going to put it in a comment. Um, it is, you know, it's super easy to get to. It's in a link tree. There's about eight different options, but one clearly says Symbiolic with this boy's face on it. So if you miss it, I, I have some problems. Anyway. <laughs> or you have some problems, and I'm going to be bringing them. Anyway, but... <laughs> But yeah, just go check it out, and of course check out Demonico as well if you're looking for more of an actual comic experience. Uh, Demonico has uh, much more art, uh, along with words, uh, written like a book as well. So if you want to check out that, more of a comic type of thing, feel free to see that as well. It's also included in the link tree. Of course, join the Discord too, because Discord is where I post a lot of sneak peeks to art and events, uh, potentially even giveaways on Instagram. So. Uh, make sure you follow all my stuff, get up to date with everything, and uh, enjoy reading. So, that's all I've got for today. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time, peace out.